There is a Proctor problem for the prosecution in the trial of Karen Reed, a big Proctor problem, one which may not really have anything to do with what actually happened to John O'Keefe, but the credibility of the investigation, the overall process in which it took place, everything is up for question because of the lead investigator, John Proctor. I want to talk about this. Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, uh, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program with the FBI. Um, I, I was shocked this last week after seeing the testimony from uh, Proctor on the stand. Uh, we have plenty of clips. We'll go to them in a little bit. But oh, my God, uh, this is and we've talked about it many times, how important it is to have uh, leadership at the top being credible, being uh, leaders, not doing what Proctor had been doing. Uh, and and it, it just taints the entire damn thing. Um, I'm going to open it up to you before we listen to anything. What was your reaction to all of his testimony the other week? You hit the word I was going to emphasize as well. Where the hell was the leadership? Yeah. You know, every time inside the Bureau we had an investigation, and even with my own behavioral team, if we're going out to try to recruit a confidential human source, a spy, or we've got an espionage investigation where we're going to be interviewing a subject that has done re really heinous things, the last thing you want to do is objectify the human being because – Anything can be used to show a negative confirmation bias, a negative confirmation bias, taints the entire investigation, both from a reality on the ground standpoint. Because when you have a negative confirmation bias, all you see is what's wrong. You, you're going to miss all the things that could lead to innocence. And that is not good if you're going to be an objective, pragmatic investigator, especially when you're going to be in front of a jury. That's why it's so important for investigators to – not have social media that's going to be one way or the other way. I mean, everyone I know is so careful about what they say, what they post, and how they portray themselves in the public light because that's all discoverable mm -hmm. in front of a jury where you're supposed to be an objective purveyor of law, of justice. And he totally undermined himself. And like you said, the leadership factor was my first question after I saw this and saw the negative confirmation bias he had was, where was the leadership that should have removed him? Because that is that as soon as this started happening, leadership should say, hey, you're a little too close to this. You have a little too much vested, emotionally attached to this. you got to be removed. You're not objective enough to do an investigation that can be truthful and accurate and bring justice. I mean, did he think that this would never go to court, that this was never going to be a trial, that all this would just get brushed under the rug? I mean, it's. It's shocking. It's like he's never done this before. But, I mean, he's been in this role for a while. And, by the way, he's still employed. Uh, he's right. under investigation at this moment in time, which could affect that. I would hope it does affect that. It doesn't just kind of wait out for a while and then, oh, we'll put you back in. Um, but, my God, I mean, it, it, I, I'm just kind of shocked by it. Although, what my guess would be is this is a pattern of behavior. This is this is not just unique. It's not like a spike for Karen Reed. I'm guessing there needs to be a close look at anything he's been involved in in terms of investigating uh, and his ethics to doing it. Tony, you're reading my mind because the next thing I thought of was just that. I said, what other investigations has he been a part of? Because you know every single person now that's been locked up that he was investigating, their lawyers are going to town on investigating this, this mm -hmm. very thing to see what they can do to – to overturn anything or get a retrial. I mean, you have no idea what the implications of this may or may not be. Don't know. And as to what would compel him to do this, you're right. No one just has a spike. And if someone has a spike, it's it's going to be caused by a, an incredible singular event, which could be the death of a friend. Mm -hmm. um, so that could do it. So either in either event, he is incredibly emotionally hijacked. And we become emotionally hijacked. We have a real inability to control our reactions, our emotions, the things we say, especially if we have other things we've been doing, like on the night in question, everything, all this drinking that's going on. I mean, that lowers that that cognitive uh, ability to begin with anyway. I mean, there's just, oh my gosh, there's so much wrong with this case. There is. Let's take a look. Uh, this is one of the initial things. This is before he started calling her a bunch of horrible names and such. 
Uh, this is just his denial of of having any sort of, um, you know, interest or or relationship to John O'Keefe or any of those involved uh, in the case. I did not know the McCabe's. I don't know most of them, the Alberts, and I have little to no relationship with Chris and Julie. That was a lie, wasn't it? No, absolutely not. You stand by that testimony? Yes. That you don't know the McC you at, at the time that you testified, that you didn't know the Alberts or any members of the Albert family? That I don't have relationships with them. Right. My question is, you keep going back to relationships. I'm asking you, did you testify that you didn't know them? Objection. I'll let him have it. Do, do you understand the question, Trooper? I knew Chris, Julie, and Colin. Ten days before Mr. O'Keefe's death, you were texting with your sister about whether Julie Albert might be available to babysit for your own son, correct? Yes. So in fact, your relationship with the Alberts was close enough that you would consider leaving your own child in the hands of Julie Albert as a babysitter, as a caregiver for your toddler, correct? I wouldn't say close enough. I mean, uh, granted, I mean, I've had babysitters for my kids that I, I didn't know extremely well. I wasn't necessarily close with their family and such, but I, I knew enough about them to know they weren't going to kidnap my child. I could guess from this that they probably figured that out for that babysitter, but there clearly is a, a greater connection here that he was trying to play down. It doesn't it remind you of the testimony that Bill Clinton gave on the Monica Lewinsky? <laughs> Depends on what the definition of is is. Yes. You know, he is playing with words. He's wordsmithing in his own mind, rationalizing the word relationship uh, in, a, in an attempt to avoid lying. And that's what we do. People really don't lie in their own minds. They're not trying to lie. They try to avoid lying at all costs. And the way we do that is we redefine words in our own minds we rationalize behavior and we use word bridging we use word modifiers and in this case he is using the word relationship meaning something different than what the people around him are defining it as mm -hmm. and, and justifying it uh over and over and over in different ways there's a lot wrong here uh with this case and uh, one other big piece of this is missing video uh again and and, and I, I gotta preface this because i don't know that any of this changes uh what i still assume is the fact that karen reed hit john o'keefe not on purpose but there seems to be uh like an overlying film on this whole thing where proctor really wanted to make sure that karen reed got in trouble got convicted got charged got something but he didn't need to do it. It's like the evidence was already there, but now because there's this tainted, uh, you know, film over the whole damn thing, it, it puts everything into question. You know, it, it reminds you of Delphi, doesn't it? Where, you know, things just go missing. Mm -hmm. It does. <laughs> you know, in, in investigation. And it brings to me a, of a level of arrogance as well. You know, he's the, the superiority, the sense of arrogance in the sense that, you know, he thinks he can play with the word relationship and everyone around him is an idiot and is not going to see what he's attempting mm -hmm. to do to rationalize away the behavior. And it's the same thing, you know, with with every aspect of this investigation. He, he thinks he can, you know, be in charge of things. He knows better than everyone else. And I think it, it's falling apart around it. Like, like you said, there was enough there to show something bad happened. Yeah. He didn't have to do all that he's doing, but for some reason he felt compelled to do it. And, and again, you ask yourself, why was he left in this position? What, what's going on in leadership there? What's, you know, what other case has been impacted by this? And, and also why, you know, so th it's interesting to me too, that it looks like the group of people around this, didn't like Karen really bad. Mm -hmm. And obviously they disliked her a lot more than John disliked her. Cause John, I, and, you know, there, there seems to be a lot of toxicity between a lot of people in this thing. And when they yeah. had the opportunity to throw her under the bus, uh, it looks like they're seizing that opportunity for some reason. They were definitely seizing. I, I, I'm starting to understand more and more about the free Karen Reed movement. Although I do think it is very, very misguided. I do understand the level of frustration that people in that community 
have with their law enforcement if this is how it operates. Uh, yeah, no kidding. That, that's easy to understand. And now it's all coming out in this very vile way um, that that otherwise wouldn't erupt in that way had it been more on the up and up. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.